Hello, welcome to the weather update. It is September 30th, the last day of September, and it is about 9.40 p.m., and there you see the clouds and the rain from Ian making their way up the coast, and it has caused a lot of power outages in the Carolinas as well as Virginia. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a moment, but let's go to the latest in the National Hurricane Center. Looks like it's already considered post-tropical here, so it's already a post-tropical storm, but it's bringing heavy rain, flash flooding, and high winds to the Carolinas. All right, so it's about 45 miles northeast of Florence, South Carolina. Maximum sustained winds are still 60 miles an hour, moving north at 15. Minimum central pressure 990 millibars, 29.23 inches. Uh, let's go take a look and see what's going on right there, right now, along the coast of the Carolinas. We have uh, these warnings, and if, yeah, let's just go to this here as well to our warning chart here. It looks like it's all in blue now, uh, so that means uh, tropical storm warnings. And we also have a lot of flash flood warnings in effect as well. Uh, so let's go to the observations here. Uh, and we'll take a look and show you what's going on. And also the rainfall tolls in the Carolinas as well from this. I mean, I've been tracking Ian now for, what, three days straight here. Um, and, of course, the site is very slow to respond uh, because of the uh, tremendous load here on there. So the winds, winds definitely have come down. I don't see the crazy wind gusts that we do have some, though, here. Uh, we have a... Greensboro, for instance, has north-northeast wind at 23, gusting to 36, uh, and these winds have caused power outages as well. Um, here's a, uh, let's take a look and see if we've got wave height on this one. We do not have wave height on this uh, height, uh, on this uh, buoy. Uh, so let's go take a look at our rainfall totals here in the Carolinas, uh, and we'll go to our precipitation, and we'll take a look at the, I guess, the 12-hour precipitation. We'll do 24-hour precipitation. Uh, that's got to be more than that. That's not that much. Something's not right. <laughs> it's got to be more than that. There we go. That's more like it. Uh, so uh, you can see here. Um, yeah, so two to three inches of rain. Not quite as much rain as we were fearing here. We we're fearing more was going to be close to the eight. But that's still a lot of rain, and it still caused some flooding in the area. Um, let's go take a look at the power out situation there. And you can see Florida has now, now down, they've restored power to a lot of people already. Now they're down to 1.4 million customers without power. South Carolina has 118,939. And none of these are really red, so that's, that's the good news. So we're only seeing it worse, 30 to maybe 40% uh, percent of people without power in some of these counties. So that's not terrible. Let's take a look at North Carolina. Uh, some of these counties also have a lot of power outages, but again, not not as bad as it could could have been. Um, uh, and then we're also seeing power outages in Virginia too, as well uh, here as well. So we're seeing power outages, but again, it's a lot, but it's not as we have ninety four thousand out in uh, in Virginia, but again, it's not as bad as what Florida went through. But it's still, you know, it's still significant nonetheless. Um, Speaking of Florida, let's go take a look and take a look at the latest from the uh, FPL here. Uh, and they're showing some of the damage uh, that uh, has happened. So we'll just take a look at some of these pictures here. It says, many of our transmission towers are knee-deep in Hurricane Ian floodwaters, How, but they're still standing tall. The hardened backbone of our grid is operational. So it sounds like most of the transmission system is up and running at FPL. Uh, so that's good. It's mostly just the distribution system that has suffered because, again, those poles are really hard and they can withstand a lot. And those are the kind of thing, that, those are the kind of infrastructure we need to have in the Northeast as well. But you can see some of the other uh, lines here, like these power lines here, the distribution lines. These are the ones that have suffered a lot of damage. And we'll have more pictures in the days to come, I'm sure, of some of the damage. But I want to focus now on. <coughs> Excuse me. What Ian, and hopefully that will stop after the rain comes and washes a lot of the uh, grass pollen out of the way. Uh, but um, uh, we're going to talk now about what's, what, how do we go here from here with, with Ian and its effects on our area because we're going to see rain. Uh, so let's take a look at the larger satellite imagery. In fact, I'm going to look at the, do we have one for the East Coast? Just U.S. Atlantic Coast or something like that? Yeah, that's fine. Because this is a, it's a big feature. You need to you need to you need to go way out and show it to you. So here we go. Uh, this is it right here. This is Ian, and you can see uh, its circulation. It's pretty large. It covers the whole East Coast. The clouds are now all the way up into Maine, uh, and you can see here that um, we have again. This is the dry side of the storm here. Uh, so there's still, again, it's just looking more extra tropical uh, than anything. 
Um, and we'll go to the weather and hazards map. I'm going to go back to the current conditions here. Uh, and uh, you can see here, we can also look at temperatures and dew points and show you where the cooler air is coming in. So you can see there's some warm human air on the south side of it. Oh, yeah, look at that. 75 of the dew point is 75 being reported there at Hatteras. So there's some tropical humidity in the air. However, I don't think that any of that gets to us. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the conditions in our area right now. And you can see we've got the northeast winds. Dew points are pretty low and comfortable. Very nice walking weather today, although the sky was kind of overcast. It was very comfortable outside. Um, and you can see temperatures are now in the 50s. We can get this to load again. We're having a lot of problems with this site, as you see here. So temperatures generally in the upper 50s to around 60. Uh, and we're already starting to see some of those wind gusts. I'll take the dew point out of here. Uh, we're already starting to see those wind gusts already. Um, so let's go take a look at what our highs were for today. Um, and we'll go take a look at the highs. So highs generally were only in the mid-60s. We we're definitely below normal. We'll be well below normal as we get toward tomorrow. So let's go take a look at the models now. And we'll uh, go to eastern U.S. So we'll go out a little bit so you can see the feature here. Here's the high of the north. And uh, what's going to happen here, obviously, and again, um, if we go to the upper features in the atmosphere, like 250 wind, you'll see we don't really have much of a jet stream in place. Uh, and that, going forward, brings the moisture from Ian up the coast. Generally, it's got nowhere else to go, uh, which means our drought should be over. Um, and then you'll see we have the trough, a weak trough coming in as we get into l later next week. All right, and a little bit of a split flow there. But I really don't want to talk too much about the long range right now. Uh, let's go back to the surface uh, so we can put all this in motion here. So uh, the low comes, and you can see it decouples pretty quickly. The winds are pretty much not an issue as we get toward tomorrow. It'll be a little breezy, but you'll see what uh, the main thing is. We're going to be dealing with a pretty heavy soaking rain, uh, heavy downpours, in, especially in the first half of Saturday. Then there's a little break, and then we have another chance of showers on Sunday. Uh, and then this high pressure tries to build in, but you see there's a low that early forms right offshore there. Uh, this might be, I don't know if this is going to be, if this becomes tropical, I don't know if it's going to be called Ian or not at this point. It might. Um, we don't know. Um, but fortunately, the GFS does take it away and out to sea. Uh, now, the European last time I checked was a little different on this feature. So let's go take a look at the European. Uh, and it has the same idea for tomorrow. Uh, we have that heavier rain first half of the day, then the later part of the day, afternoon and evenings. We get a break from the rain, and on Sunday we get some more rain. Uh, and then, But the uh, Euro lingers it a little more into Monday, especially in Jersey. And then it has that low much deeper and closer to us. Uh, and that's something to be concerned about. All right, so now let's go closer into our area. And we will look at a few more models here. Um, Actually, let's keep let's keep it on the European. So, let's keep it on the European right now, being that we have it up here. So here's the. It looks like it's trying. Something is going to develop off here, and it could be a tropical in nature. All right, and because of the way the jet stream is, we'll have to see if it winds up getting moved out or not. Um, so let's go take a look at the winds here, because we will have an extended period of easterly winds. So um, while there won't be any damaging winds on land, the prolonged easterly flow will cause some issues with beach erosion, coastal uh, coastal flooding, and that kind of thing. You could see those strong winds, especially offshore, uh, that could cause coastal flooding. South shore, Long Island, East End, and the New Jersey shore, well, really all the way through the whole east, even into the Delmarva, dealing with that, uh, with that storm. All right, so now let's take a look at the total accumulated precipitation that the European model brings, and you see it gives us at least two inches of rain, uh, which is very good to see. Uh, this is through uh, Tuesday here, uh, so at least it brings us a, a good two inches of rain here. Um, this actually goes a little more, but you can see here, uh, generally two inches of rain uh, for the total accumulated pre precip on the European model. All right, let's switch this over to the GFS, uh, and the GFS is a little less. GFS is a little less, and it gives us more like around an inch. It's still good, but two would be a really good drought buster. One inch is going to help, but we really need the two inches. So you can see how the differences in the models are. I lean more toward the European. I think we'll see two inches uh, out of it. Um, so let's go back to the precipitation view, and we will go and we will look at the HRRR model next and the 0Z run of the HRRRs, higher resolution model compared to the others. Uh, so... Rain starts after midnight tonight. It's heavy in the morning, especially heavy in the morning. You can see those yellows. Uh, and then we get a little bit of a break in the uh, afternoon. Um, 
a little bit of break, maybe a scattered shower too. I can't say it's going to be dry, but it'll you know won't be a steady rain. And then as we get into Sunday, you'll see a few more uh, showers develop here. So as far as it goes, is to 19Z Sunday. All right. Uh, looking at the total accumulated precip on this model here, the HRRR, it gives us the one to two. Though as you go north and west, it, it's significantly less. All right. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of disagreement in the models here as far as precipitation goes. And then I can also look at the NAM. Uh, we can use the NAM. Uh, let's go to the NAM three. Uh, we don't really have enough of the zero Z run of the NAM three, but we can look at uh, what it looks like through Monday here. And again, you see that similar. They all, most of them seem to agree that the heavier precipitation is going to be south and the to the south and east of the area. All right. Um, looking at the NAM. So here's the NAM. Uh, and again, that rain starts. And you can see the heavier rain. Obviously, this is the higher resolution. And it could be some showers, maybe even a rumble of thunder in there, perhaps. The NAM is a little more, wants to have it linger a little more into the uh, overnight hours. And then it takes it off. Whereas the NAM has a tendency to overdo it a little bit. Um, you can see it still has it raining as of uh, Monday here. So the NAM is much slower to move this out uh, compared to some of the other models that are out there uh, that we have. Um, European, again, we'll go to the European here. Uh, obviously, lower resolution. Um, it, so it's like the European. It basically won't move it out until Monday. Um, so, yeah, because, again, it's kind of cut off. This low is, this low is just kind of sitting here, kind of cut off because there's no jet stream to move it along. Um so um, now that you've seen an idea of the rainfall totals and, you know, some of the conditions we'll be dealing with, it's just going to be, we're not going to see too much damage in the area. It's just going to be kind of a miserable, but it will be a wet and will be needed, uh, needed rainfall for sure uh, that we definitely need badly. Uh, it was the only way to really get out of this was the remnants of the tropical storm to get out of this horrible drought that we're in, uh, that we've been in for a while now. And uh, we've had some, you know, little rain events here and there but we need a soaking of one to two inches we need a good heavy rain not just a thunderstorm we need a heavy rain that lasts for a while at least a day or two to really soak things into the ground uh, so we can finally uh, put at least the worst of this drought behind us because we're still in a severe drought uh, hopefully after this we won't be anymore um, so let's take a look at our dew points and wind flows here as we head into your Saturday. We've got the easterly winds here, and they tighten up, and you'll see a little bit of increase in the moisture. Uh, though it won't really get that humid. Dew points may get as high as 60. The really humid air stays off to the south. And you can see this cooler air, trying to this drier air, trying to work back in here on Sunday. All right. Uh, and you can see, again, the strong great wind uh, that we will have. It will be breezy out, but I don't... I mean, maybe very widely scattered power outages, but I don't think we'll see... The kind of damage that they're seeing further south uh it's mainly going to just be about the rain for us and the coastal flooding uh so here we are with the air temperatures tomorrow obviously uh we're going to struggle to reach 60 degrees tomorrow uh and then sunday could be even cooler with highs only in the mid 50s that's well below well below normal uh for this time of the year um so if we want to go a little further here and look at the gfs uh which we will do next um you'll see that uh, as we head into the next week here, you'll see some recovery there uh, in the temperatures as we head to, but we may have to wait till Tuesday or Wednesday till we see the sun again, uh, because it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be, uh, we're going to be stuck in this for a while. So if we look at the clouds here, which I shouldn't even show you, but we will obviously clouds tomorrow and Sunday. Monday, we try to get rid of them. Maybe we can get them out for Tuesday, but you can see that low is kind of cut off. So it's it's kind of anybody's guess what's going to happen from there. And I just don't know that, that far out what's going to happen. Um, have the RGM as well. Uh, you can see it just kind of sits there. This is the issue. It just kind of sits there and spins offshore. It's just kind of cut off at this point. It's just going to sit there. Uh, and uh, we'll have to see if we're going to be dealing with any rain. This, again, is the uh, RGM, and it keeps the rain going. So we have to see what happens. It actually brings the rain back into the area on Tuesday. Uh, and GFS does not do that. GFS has a stronger high and keeps the rain offshore. But again, if we look at the European model, which I know only goes out to 12Z Tuesday, uh, we don't have all of it in yet. Um, I mean, I could look at the 12Z European model. So you get the idea. It tries to bring it back. 
So we're going to have to see what happens. That low is just going to sit there offshore and uh, elbow those waters, and it could actually gain some ca regain some char tropical characteristics again before moving out later on in the week. Uh, but the bottom line is this. It's going to be a damp, wet weekend, uh, but this is the kind of weekend we need to get out of the drought because, again, if we go to look at the drought monitor here, um, let's go to this here. We'll go to the drought monitor. And look at the northeast. You'll see that we are still in, especially let's go to New York here. We are still in uh, a severe drought for much of Long Island, except the North Shore, which is on a moderate drought. After this, I think this should get us down to moderate drought, if not abnormally dry. So hopefully we will be out of the worst of this drought, and Jersey will too, because it's just been it's ridiculous. The lakes, some of the lakes have really just dried up, and, you know, we got to get some water in those lakes. Um, so I think that's going to wrap up this weather update. Uh, if there's any good that comes out of Ian after all the suffering it brought to Florida and even some of the Carolinas. And, of course, my prayers go out to everybody in Florida dealing with this horrible disaster uh, that they're dealing with down there. It's absolutely awful. Uh, people have lost everything. Um, you know, um, their towns are destroyed. Uh, there's so much damage. Uh, and it's going to take a very long time for them to recover. So our prayers go out to everybody, especially in southwest Florida, dealing with the mess over there. Um, anyway, uh, but at least there'll be some good to come out of Ian, even though it brought mostly horrible things, uh, but it will bring some much needed rain for us that we need so badly. Uh, so we'll just take one last look at the radar here and you'll see the rain here, uh, kind of already. It looks like it's already over New Jersey and here it is further to the South. So this will be bringing much needed rain to our area. Finally, the kind of soaking that we've needed for a long time. We'll finally get this weekend. So thank you for watching and have a good night.